hello everybody and a warm welcome from our side. My name is Tobias Unkelhäuser and as you already know, um, we want to talk to you about um, a new generation of crosslinkers for formulating specialist and clear codes. Um, for today's session we have prepared a presentation which has the title again the best of two worlds um, silent polyurethane hybrid crosslinkers for specialist encodings. And let's have a quick look on the agenda. The presentation is divided into three sections. The uh, first section is an introduction into the topic and we will uh, focus here as well on the chemical background of our new crosslinkers. Then we will um, show you some um, formulation examples, formulation which are based on those new crosslinkers on that new technology and we will also discuss some uh, property profiles which are achievable while using those formulations and in the end uh, the third part will be as well a brief summary. Let us at first look on to the value chain of our new um, technology. Uh, Evonik is a company, um, a raw material um, producer uh, which is somewhat uh, very strong in the uh, first step of the value chain. We have a certain knowledge within our company um, concerning silane um, technology and as well we have a certain competence uh, in uh, isocyanate chemistry and as well cross-linking technology and now we really um, combine these competencies within one molecule the molecule is our key raw material for our new um, crosslinkers and the name of this molecule is IPMS or the long version is isocyanatopropyl trimetoxysilane. Maybe we should also add to this that we have a whole supply chain and can guarantee that this key molecule is available to the market. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Markus, for this additional information. Yeah, let's come to the question, to the important question, but what exactly is meant by scratch resistance? When we talk about scratch resistant coatings in general, we mean resistant against micro scratches. Micro scratches can occur due to dirt particles, sand particles, and dust particles, and as well aggressive car wash brushes. On the right side of the slide you see an example of a surface which was scratched and here you can see very clearly those micro scratches, tiny little scratches which destroy the appearance of a coating. How do we measure the scratch resistance in our laboratory? We have therefore a quite simple method installed. Um, normally we apply it on a metal panel a black base coat and on top the top coat containing our products and we measure with a gloss meter or reflectometer the initial gloss of the coating. After that procedure, we put this panel into a scratch device which is called a crop meter. It's a standard device for scratching um, coatings. And after the scratch um, procedure, we measure the gloss of the coating again with the reflectometer so that we have two values for the gloss of the coating. And the deviation of those two values gives us an impression onto the um, scratch performance of the coating. So the lower the deviation is, the better is the scratch resistance or uh, our value for um, determining the scratch resistance is the loss of cloth. So the lower the loss of cloth is, the better is the scratch resistance of that coating. Let's proceed to the next slide. As I said before, our crosslinkers or the technology is based on IPMS. Here you can see um, the molecule of this isocyanatopropyl trimetoxysilane. It contains a three isocyanate group and three alkoxy groups, which can later on in the coating build up uh, necessary networks to create scratch resistances. We have developed two product lines. Um, the first product line is called Vesonat EPM. Those grades are suitable for um, systems which need to be cured at elevated temperatures. Suitable applications are here OEM clear coats, for instance, or car refinish, car repair coatings. 
On the other side of the slide, we have also solutions available, crosslinkers. The name of uh, them is Westernart EPMF. Those crates are suitable for ambient temperature curing um, and suitable for systems um, which can be applied on substrates which are a bit more heat sensitive, like wood or plastic. Here you can see how we produce our crosslinkers. So due to the free isocyanate group of the IPMS and due to its toxicity, we need to convert this IPMS with a molecule. You can use a molecule with um, an isocyanate reactive group, for instance, an hydroxyl group, and you can bind IPMS with this backbone. And here, for instance, we've combined two molecules of IPMS with a backbone. Here in that case, um, it seems to be a diol trial. You can choose whatever you like, and then you get a um, scheme of a molecule which um, shows us yeah, roughly the molecule structure of one of our new crosslinkers, the Vestinat EPM95. The crosslinker consists of six alkoxy groups, which can react later in the coating system. It contains two polyurethane groups or more. And those polyurethane groups um, yeah, are responsible um, that we achieve quite nice mechanical properties later on in the coating. And what I've mentioned before, we have a spacer here in the middle. And um, you can imagine that you can here choose from a variety of different spacers. And the choice of spacer has a direct influence onto the uh, received or uh, obtained results later on in the coating. So you can really adjust certain properties by choosing an um, adequate spacer. You can influence, for instance, um, the surface energy with the spacer, the flexibility, or as well the functionality. So the technology offers, in general, a potential to tailor specific properties as well in the future. But for the time being, we have just four crosslinkers in our portfolio. And all of those crosslinkers um, generate specialist coatings. On this slide, I want to show you some typical properties of our um, crosslinker M95. The solid content for that crosslinker, which can be used at elevated uh, temperature curing, the solid content is 100%. Um, so here are no VOCs around. The viscosity is somewhat low. Um, the color is below uh, 50 hazen, so it's a transparent um, liquid. Um, it is soluble in ketones, aromatics, and esters. And the most important point, the NCO content is below 0.1%. Now we come to the embryo temperature curing side. Um, we have here as well a crosslinker available, the Vestinat EPMF201. The solid content of this crosslinker is, again, 100%. The viscosity is very low. It is also a transparent liquid. Um, the crosslinker is soluble in aromatics, ketones, but not esters. We really don't recommend to use esters in combination with that crosslinker because this will lead to a traumatic reduction of the shelf life of this product. And last but not least, the NCO content is again below 0.1%. This chart shows us how those so-called acoxy groups can react in coating systems. There are two possibilities. Um, the first possibility is called a hydrolysis condensation reaction. So these acoxy groups can react um, by themselves, with themselves, and form so-called siloxane bondings. This is one opportunity. The other opportunity is that if we have some alcohol groups around in the system or hydroxyl groups, then those acoxyl groups can link with them as well, um, while both reactions work under methanol evaporation. Here you can see, again, the whole product range. Um, as I said before, the Westernard EPM crates are curing at higher temperatures, starting from 80 degrees C, up to 140, 150, 160 degrees C. And we have crates available which cure really at ambient temperature, starting from zero degrees C up to 40 degrees C. 
You see again our standard crosslinker, our Westnard EPN95. This is our so-called working horse, and we have besides that a modified version. Um, so in case you need a coating which should be a bit more flexible, then you can add um, certain dosages of a um, modifier of a flexibilizer, and this flexibilizer is called Westernard EP M222. The same approach uh, we have on the opposite side. We have here for ambient temperature curing again a working horse, the Westernard EP M F201, and again a more flexible version, and the name of it is Westernard EP MF202. Um, what I forgot to say is that if you are using the crates shown on the left side of the slide, you need an external catalyzation of the system. Here we recommend to use an alcohol ammonium salt, which we will see later on also in the um, formulation examples. On the right side, these crosslinkers are ready to use crosslinkers, so they are quick catalyzed version. There is no need to add an external catalyst here. Okay, let us come to the next part of the presentation to formulation examples and the properties of those formulations. At first I want to show you a so-called NISO system. NISO stands for non-isocyanate system. Here we combine in a ratio of 5 to 5 and standard acrylic polyol with our Vessanard EPM95. In that formulation we have an uh, additional catalyst the Vesternard EP cut 11, which we need for an adequate curing of the alkoxy groups here. We have some solvents around and a leveling agent from Tigo, the Tigo Clyde 410. And now we looked at the properties of such a coating and compared the coating properties with a standard 2K polyurethane formulation based on an HDI trimer. We cured at 22 minutes, 140 degrees C, and measured different properties like the hardness of the coating, the flexibility of the coating, the chemical resistance of um, the surface, and last but not least, most important, the loss of cloth, our indicator for the scratch resistance of the coating. And what we see is when we compare the state of the art technology with that nice approach, which we saw on the previous page, is that we can achieve um, very good mechanical uh, properties. They are nearly on a, a similar uh, niveau. We gain um, comparable chemical resistances, and the scratch resistance is, in terms, we use this new um, crosslinker, this new silane polyurethane hybrid crosslinker dramatically improved with the 2K polyurethane formulation. We have a loss of cloth of 38 and on the right side we have just a loss of cloth after the scratch procedure of 2. So this is a quite nice approach here. Another approach, another possibility how to use um, this new M95 crosslinker is um, what we call a boosting of 2K polyurethane formulations. It's a it's an approach with a high degree of ease of use. Here you can really use your standard in-house 2K formulation, which contains an acrylic polyol, in that case an HDI trimer, the Vesternard HT2500L, and you can add, and here the ratios are individually adjustable, the Vesternard EPM95. This formulation shows a so-called 100% formulation, or 100% boosted formulation. What is meant by that? 100% um, means that we add the same dosage of M95 as we have solid content coming from the acrylic polyol and HDI trimer. So, and as I said before, here you can really play around with the dosage M95 depending on the properties you are shooting for. We measured again several coating properties of those boosted systems. We cured at 22 minutes, 140 degrees C, and at first we evaluated a reverend system based on HDI trimer in that case. Here shown by the 0% dosage column, 
you see the reference system we measured here, hardness again, the flexibility, and the acid edge. And then we stepwise increased the amount of N95 in that formulation up to 100%. So 100% was the first uh, formulation on the previous slide. And what we see is when we are adding uh, N95 to this 2K polyethane formulation is that we get a slight decrease of hardness and flexibility with an increasing amount of N95. So we dilute a bit the um, standard 2K polyethane characteristics, but still in the end at 100% we are in, a, uh, in the green field. And those properties are suitable for a lot of high-end applications. What we see here when we talk about the acid edge is that we get in all cases a comparable acid edge and the methyl ethyl ketone resistance is as well quite high with 150 double rubs. We looked a bit further into the topic of chemical resistances and tested um, certain formulation against suntan lotion. Suntan lotion is um, always a an important uh, topic for automotive clear coats um, in the interior use or exterior use. And um, here we have tested a standard 2K polyurethane formulation against a boosted system. And what we see um, is if the suntan lotion is applied onto the top coat, um, we see at low temperatures um, a very yeah, let's say harsh attack of the suntan lotion. We get a highly structured surface. We get a swelling and a haze. So the uh, suntan lotion is quite aggressive and the 2K coating is not as stable as the boosted system in that case. Here on the right side we see a very smooth surface, um, yeah, undamaged surface. So due to the fact that we have here a higher cross-link density, we can achieve in that case um, or exceed the 2K polyurethane um, characteristics in that case. And what about the scratch resistance? Therefore, we want to show you a graph. On the X scale is the dosage Vestonat EPM95 and on the Y scale is the loss of clots. And here in that case, um, we measured the scratch resistance for two different coating systems. One is just based on an is based on a plant of an HDI trimer and IPDI trimer. So here we are using as well Westernart T1890, which is the IPDI trimer. But the trends are true for both systems. We see here that with um, relatively small amounts of N95, we can win a lot. Even at 20% dosage N95, we can dramatically improve the scratch resistance of um, the coating up to 100% where the loss of cloth is just um, yeah, nearly in the range of zero. So really, depending on the properties you are shooting for, you can adjust um, the system by adding more or less N95. So it's a plug in technology somehow. Okay, that's it from my side. Um, now I will hand over to my colleague, Mr. Marco Fallack. He will explain us uh, what we can do with our cross-linkers, um, which are suitable for ambient temperature curing. And hello to everybody. Um, just keep the last chart in mind, where we have some significant improvement of scratch resistance and the single difference between what you heard before and what you hear right now is the securing temperature. We spoke about the stove animals, stove varnishes. Right now we come back to the ambient curing systems. You recognize <coughs> that an addition of 10 to 20 percent helps a lot to increase scratch resistance. And you see on this chart right now, the actual one, that the formula can be very, very simple. You just have an acrylic polyol with some thinner, add a little bit of low-end leveling agent. As your component B, you don't need isocyanate. 
you simply add as a crosslinker the EPM at 201. That's enough. enough. So results are comparable and please keep the last chart in mind. Right now we are back on the stoichiometric ratio. You may ask yourself the question, can I calculate the right stoichiometric mixture? No. It's a free choice how much you need. If you need a high chemical, high structural system coating with an additional benefit of higher solid content, you can add up to 30 or 50 percent of the MF201. If you need less as standard, you simply add less. It's up to your choice, it's to your decision how much you need. The target is what your customer expects from that coating. Trying behavior, hardening behavior is absolutely comparable to standard effect polyurethanes and it's not depending to the MF201. Coming to the next chart, you see a direct comparison between a standard two-pack polyurethane based on the same acrylic binder, cured with nice cyanate, and with the MF201. The scratcher system is significantly improved. As a nice side effect, you can improve also solid content. This is for the VOC reduction, maybe essential. And to make it even more simple, here we have the alternative formulation for clear coat air drying based on nearly 100% MF201. It's just a little bit of a thinner. We would highly recommend xylene. Uh, Tobias mentioned before that the use of esters or alcohols can lead to a shorter shelf life, not port life shelf life, due to the reaction with an alkaline catalyst we use the MF201. And you simply add a little bit of a flow and leveling agent. In that case, we use 410, which is probably very well known. Finally, you get a coating which cures within one hour at room temperature up to 40 degrees C. I wouldn't recommend to do it on a higher temperature, but also down to zero Celsius within two hours. And the result is a nearly 90% solid coating with outstanding scratch resistance, a perfect filling behavior, and even an outstanding chemical resistance. So if you need a real perfect clear coat, here it is. The results you see here we tested with this high gloss scratch resistant coating. Within one day you achieve a hardness of 122. The so MAC resistance with 150 plus plus counts by itself and you can formulate below 100 grams per liter. And this is outstanding. As a one pack, really easy to use coating. Just open the can, apply it, basically that's it. Here we have all the benefits in a row you can achieve with that binder. I think it's attractive. And right now coming to the summary of the whole presentation, what we fulfill with our hybrid crosslinkers or binders in different respects is that we get at least by its beginning an outstanding scratch resistance. We can echo this several times, but besides this, we have an excellent chemical behavior, a very good appearance, uh, it's most solvent-free. Uh, I would at least raise my hand when it comes to below 100 grams per liter due to the need of some solvents to adjust this or that formulation. We have an extreme high compatibility with different other binders due to the short chain lengths we use in our binders or hardeners. We have very fast pure recycles when it comes to ambient curing. We enabled that technology to be happy in curing at all. We have a good sensibility and what's coming next means that we also can pigment this coating. This means they are also stable with the pigmentation. 
but probably diseases within the new month, the next month. Avonic. Power to create.